So now let's consider another example. So from this circuit, right, we have uh, the two loops. So the loop one, uh, we have the R1 connected in the parallel with an inductor. And for the loop two, we have the R2 connected in parallel with a capacitor. And then we have the loop one and the loop two connected in the series with a AC source here. And we know that the current through the source is equal to the two amperes and in terms of the size of the omega t. So the two ampere here is going to be the current amplitude or the maximum current. And the frequency of the source is equal to the 50 hertz. So now for the part A, we just want to find the potential difference uh, delta V1 across the loop 1. So from, uh, from this picture, right, it should be the potential difference across here. Okay, then okay, so let's consider the loop one first. Uh, the loop one we have we have a uh, resistor and inductor connected in the parallel. So let's assume that the current through the uh, resistor is just equal to, I don't know, maybe I of the R1. And then the current through the inductor just equal to the I L. Okay, so I use the capital letter to represent that. This is the, uh, the amplitude of the current. So now for the uh, phasor diagram, right? Because uh, delta V1 is going to be the common variables between these uh, two loads here. Then if you make it to be the horizontal axis, okay, so this is going to be the delta V1. And we say that the current through the resistor, we have the same phase as the delta V1. So in this case, uh, the current through the resistor, we go to this direction as well. This will be the I of the R1. And then the the current through the inductor, we have uh, we have the phase uh, lacking the delta V1 by 90 degree. Okay, so from this table, uh, okay, for the for the inductor, so delta V leads the I by 90 degree, or the I will lack the delta V by 90 degree as well. Then we have that. The IL should go to this direction. Okay, so this will be the IL. Okay, then when we combine uh, these two vectors together, then we can get the resultant vector to be this one. Okay, so this can be equal to the I naught, right? Should be equal to the I naught because the current through the whole thing here should be equal to the two ampere. So I mean, right now I'm talking about the, the, the current amplitude, okay? Because this thing and this thing connected in the series and connected to the source as well. And we know that the current through the source equal to uh, the, the maximum amplitude, right? Equal to two ampere. So the maximum amplitude of this one and this one must be equal to the two ampere as well. <coughs> so we have the I naught equal to the two amperes, uh, the two point oh oh ampere, right? Okay, then. So what we just want to find in these uh, questions, we just want to find the tau v one, right? So then to find the tau v one here. It means that we need to know the C first. We need to know the impedance of the circuit first, okay? And then we need to know these angles, the angles between the V1 and the current here. So let's just start from the C. 
uh, from equation right for the parallel combination we say that the one over the c1 equal to so the c1 is going to be the impedance of the first loop here so one over the c1 equal to the one over the r1 right and then plus uh, one over the x uh, let me take a look <coughs> uh, xc minus the xl and this will be the square right the xc minus 1 over the xl and to the square and then square root so in these questions uh, we don't have the xc Okay, so in this question, we don't have the XC, we have only the XL. So the XC just go to the zero. Okay, the XC just go to the zero, something like this. And then, okay, but uh, do we know the XL? We don't know yet, right? Okay, so let's find the XL first. The XL equal to the omega and then times the L, right? So the omega equal to what? Omega equal to the two pi times the frequency. Frequency is just equal to the fifty point zero hertz, right? And then times the L. The L is this value thirty eight point two milli henry. Okay. So then you will get that the XL is just equal to uh twelve point zero ohms that's going to be the xl so then when you just plug in the r1 and the xl to the equation right you will get that uh the one over the c1 equal to the square root of uh one over the r1 square the r1 is equal to 12 ohm so we have the 12.0 and square and then plus the 1 over the xl square so 12.0 square as well and then uh, square root right so now you can just solve for the c1 okay so if you just skip this calculation part you can get that the c1 is just equal to the uh, 8.49 ohms and that's it so that's be the c1 right but now you say that we just want to find delta v1 so we have a relationship between delta v1 the i0 and the c1 right because delta v1 is going to be the uh, the voltage amplitude across this whole thing here and the i0 here is going to be the m uh, the current amplitude passing through this loop and then the c1 is going to be the impedance of this loop okay so then we can get that uh, delta v1 right the voltage amplitude is just equal to the i naught and then times the c1 so let's just find the number uh, we have the 2.00 for the i naught and we have the 8.49 for the c1 so then we can get that the delta v1 is just equal to the 17.0 volts okay so now let's find the phase. Uh, let's find this one. Phi two, uh, phi one. Sorry, let's find the phi one. Okay, the phase angle. <coughs> then uh, the phi one just equal to the arc ten. Okay, uh, opposite and then over the adjacent, right? The the opposite is uh, the I L, and the adjacent is the i of the r1 right all just equal to the x10 of uh, the r1 and then over the xl okay x10 of the r1 over the xl so now let's just put in the number r1 uh, is uh, 12 okay and the XL just 
12 as well then finally you will get that the answer is just uh, the 45.0 degree so that's gonna be the free one okay so then finally we can just write down uh, the delta v1 function to be equal to okay so the amplitude is just uh, the 17.0 volt right and then times the psi of the omega t okay so let's consider this we know that the current is just the psi of the omega t okay but now from this phasor diagram right you can see that delta v1 we have the phase leading the current by uh, 45 degree so it means that we need to add the 45.0 degree to the psi function because the phase of uh, delta v1 right just leading the phase of the current by 45 degree okay so this will be the answers for the part a okay so now let's consider for the part b just similar to the part a we just want to find uh, the potential difference across the loop 2 so in this picture it means that uh, we just want to find delta v2 here okay we want to find delta v2 here okay so then how about let's just start from uh, drawing the facet diagram first so delta v2 is going to be the common variables for the r2 and for the c right so let me just make the delta v2 as the uh, horizontal axis okay and then the current through the r2 uh, let's say i r2 okay and the current through the C, let's say it's be the IC. So then again, right? I mean, I just I'm, I'm just writing down the current amplitude, not the current as function of the time, because I use the capital letter here. So the current through the R two, we have the same phase as the delta V two. So we have that it will go into the same direction as well. <coughs> so now for the capacitor. We say that the current through the capacitor we have the phase leading the potential difference by the 90 degree right from the table okay from the table uh, okay so we say that uh, for the capacitor the potential difference will lack the current by 90 degree or on the other hand we can say that the current through the capacitor will lead the delta vc by 90 degree as well so now in this case we can just write out the vector of the ic to be in this direction so this can be the ic okay because the ic is leading delta v2 by 90 degree so then we just uh, combine these two together as the vector oops sorry So we can get this one uh, again so this is going to be equal to the i zero right because the total current passing through the loop 2 here must be the same as this current passing through the whole circuit so it's called the i zero which is equal to the uh, equal to the 2.00 ampere and then let's say that uh, this phase angles equal to the phi 2 okay uh, then let's find the xc first from the equation the xc is just equal to the one and then over the omega times the c right and then omega is just equal to the two pi times the frequency the 50.0 hertz and then times the c 
the C is just the 530 microfarad. Then we have uh, the number of the XC to be equal to uh, the 6.01 ohm. That's going to be the XC. So now we just want to find the C2. We just want to find the evidence of the loop 2 here. So now from the equation, again, just the same equation as this one, right? Uh, the 1 over the C2 equal to the square root of the 1 and then over the R, R2 square and then plus uh, the 1 over the XC minus 1 over the XL and then square and square root right so now for the root 2 uh, we have only the capacitor we don't have inductor so this is gonna go equal to the 0 right because we don't have the inductor here uh, then let's just plug in the number 1 over the R2 uh, R2 is what? R2 is X ohm okay R2 is equal to X ohm so we have the X point O O and square and then plus the 1 over the XC square XC is the 6.01 and square so now we can get that the C2 okay is going to be equal to the uh, the 4.80 ohm that's going to be the C2 but then again right we just want to find delta V2 so we have the density between uh, the amplitude of the delta V2 amplitude of the current and the uh, and the impedance here so let's say that uh, the delta V2 right it just equal to the current and then times the impedance uh, the current is the 2.00 C2 is the 4.80 so then the answer is the 9.60 volt okay that's with the delta V2 and next uh, let's find the first angle here the V2 the V2 is just equal to the arc 10 of the opposite and then over the adjacent right so it's equal to the IC and then over the I of the R2 okay which is equal to the R10 of the, uh, the R2 and then over the XC so let's just put in a number R2 is 8 and the XC is uh, 6 So then we get that the answer is the 53.1 degree. Okay. That's be this angle, the 53.1 degree. So then finally, we can just write out the delta V2, right? To be equal to, okay, the amplitude is just uh, the 9.60 ohms. And then times the psi of the omega t. Okay. So now you see that the function of the current is the sign of the omega t right but now okay from this phasor diagram uh, delta v2 is lacking the current by 53.1 degree okay so the phase lacking it must be the negative sign here and 53.1 degree okay so in this case uh, the phase of delta v2 is lacking the phase of the current by 53.1 degree so this is going to be the answer for the part B. <coughs> now for the part C. For the part C here, we just want to find the potential difference uh, across the whole thing here. Okay, across the whole thing here. Or on the other hand, we just want to find, uh, no wait, let me just paste this one first.
okay or we just want to find the potential difference across the whole thing so let's say delta v or it must be the same as the potential difference across the source here okay it must be the same things okay so it means that we need to combine the phasor diagram of the first loop and the second loop as the vector right okay so let's do it ah wait okay so let's look here the loop one and the loop two we have the common variables which is the current okay which is the current because the loop one and the loop two are connected in the series so the current must be the common variable here so i will make the current as the horizontal axis let's just start from the loop one first okay so we have the i not here making the angle v1 to the delta v uh, delta v1 right so then let's make uh, okay this will be the current i not equal to the 2.00 ampere right and then uh delta v1 making the angle v1 to the uh to the i not so it's gonna go into this direction okay uh delta v1 we have the amplitude equal to the 17 uh volts and the angle is 45 degree so we have this to be the 70 uh volts and the angles to be the 45.0 degree okay this is for uh, the loop one so now for the loop two uh the phase of delta v2 is lacking the current by uh, 53.1 degree okay and it will go like this one okay and this angle is the 53.1 degree and the magnitude of the delta v2 is 9.60 volt okay that's it uh, so now in this case, right, we can just break the vector, I mean these two vectors, into the horizontal and the vertical components. So let's just start from the 17.0 uh, volt first. So for this one, right, for this one, it just equal to the 17.0 times the cosine 45.0. Oops. And for the vertical components, I got that just equal to 17.0 times the psi of the 45.0 degree. Okay, so now let's talk about this one, right? Then we can get the uh, horizontal component to be the 9.60 volts times the cosine of the 53.1 degree and this component to be uh, the 9.60 volts times the psi 53.1 degree okay and that's it so now we need to combine uh, 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 these two vectors right as a vector so let's just start from the horizontal component first okay let's just start from the uh, delta v of the horizontal component first so we have this one and this one in the same direction so it must be adding up okay it is going to be equal to the 17.0 times the cosine 45.0 degree and then plus the 9.60 times the cosine of 53.1 degree so we just add up these two to each other uh, equal to 17.8 volts okay this will be the potential uh, difference of the horizontal axis and then for the vertical axis here this is in the upward direction this in the downward direction so it must be subtract to each other we have delta v for the vertical direction right equal to uh, 17.0 psi 45 degree 
and then minus the 9.60 times the side of the 53.1 degree. Then we get that the answer is the 4.32 volt. Okay. Now, okay. So let's draw another uh, phasor diagram. So we have the anode here, right? And then we have uh, the horizontal component of the V, delta V, right? To be the uh, 17.8 volt. And the vertical components of the delta V just equal to the 4.32 uh, volt. So when we combine these two together as the vectors, We will get this one. Okay, we will get this one. So let's say that this is equal to the V naught, right? And the phase angle equal to the phi. So the V naught here is going to be the the voltage amplitude of the AC source. Okay, it's going to be the voltage amplitude of the AC source here, or for the whole thing here as well. So then we can get that uh, the delta V naught, right? Is going to be equal to, okay, so let's use the Pentagonian theorem, equal to the 17.8 volt square. So this component. And then plus the 4.32 volt square. And then square root. So then we get that the delta V naught is going to be equal to the 18.3 Volt. So now for the phase angle, right? We get that the phi equal to the extent of okay the opposite over the adjacent. The opposite is the four point three two, and the adjacent is the seventeen point eight. Okay. So the phase angle that we can get is going to be equal to the thirteen point seven degree. So then finally, we can just write down the potential difference across the AC source or across the, the whole thing here, right? To be, okay, let's just start from the amplitude, the 18.3 volts, and then times the psi of the omega t, okay? So now let's consider the current. Uh, we say that the phase of the current equal to the omega t. But now from this phase diagram, right, the phase of delta v, uh, the phase of delta v naught is leading the phase of the current by the thirteen point seven degree. So it means that this must be plus thirteen point seven degree. So this is the answer. Okay. Uh, I would recommend you guys to check by yourself uh, to check that delta Vt is equal to delta V1t and then plus delta V2t. Okay, so please check by just plugging number of the t, any number of the times t. So the both sides of the equation must be the same. So I say that because if you look at the picture, you can see that the delta V, right, it just across uh, the loop 1 and the loop 2. It means that the potential difference across the whole thing here must be equal to the sum of the potential difference across uh, each loop. Okay. So if you plug in uh, any term, right, into this equation and into this equation, then you should get the same answer as uh, this equation as well. Okay. So that should be the idea that you should check by by yourself. Okay, uh, the last part of this question is part D. Okay, show that the summation of the powers lost in all resistors, so we have only two resistors, right? 
so each resistor is in each loop uh, is equal to the power delivered to the circuit by the AC source so we just want to show that the power loss via this resistor plus this resistor must be equal to the power that the uh, AC source just delivered to the circuit okay Okay, how about let's compute the power delivered to the circuit by the AC source first. Okay, so let me just use a symbol as, uh, no, let me just write out first. Uh, the power delivered by the AC source. Okay, so let's use uh, the P, P source. Okay, let's use the P source here. Okay, uh, let, let's use this equation. Uh, where is it? Yeah, this one. Okay, let's use this equation. Okay, the one half the I naught, beta V naught, and then times the cosine phi, right? Okay, let's copy. So the I naught here is going to be the current through. Ah, uh, sorry, it's be the current amplitude through the AC source. So we get this one already equal to the two point zero ampere, right? And the tau V naught is going to be the uh, is going to be the uh, the voltage amplitude right across the AC source which is equal to the 18.3 volt here and then times the cosine phi so this phi is going to be the uh, is going to be the fair difference between the delta V naught and the I naught so in this case it just equal to the 13.7 degree so you can use calculator to solve for this one. It's going to be equal to. Uh, let me let me check first. Uh, the seventeen point eight watt. Okay, that's going to be the power that the AC source delivered to the circuit. Okay. So now let's compute for the power loss via resistors. Mm, let's just start from the the R one first here. Okay, so let's just start from the R one. Again, right? Uh, let's say that the P of the R one. Let me change the color. The P of the R1 equal to the one half and then times the current through the R1, right? So it should be equal to uh, the I of the R1, right? But do we know that? Do we know the I of the R1? Uh, we don't know, right? We don't know. But then we know what? We know that the potential difference across the R1 equal to the V1 here. So then we can use uh data v1 and then square right then square and then over the r1 okay and then over the r1 and then times the cosine zero degree right because the fair difference between the current and data v just equal to the zero degree here so then let's just put in the number uh no wait let, let me let me uh let me make this part clear so we said that okay let me just uh write down you said that it's equal to the current through the r1 okay and then times the potential difference across the r1 which is equal to the delta v1 and then times the cosine and the angle between these two 
just equal to the zero degree. Okay. Then we don't know the i of we don't know the i of the r one, right? But we know that the i of the r one equal to delta v one and then over the r one. Okay, we know this one. So now this can be reduced to the one half and then times uh, and then times delta v one square and then over the r one, which is equal to okay. Uh, delta v one is just. 17.0 volts okay 17.0 volts and then square and then over the two times the r1 the r1 is just 12 ohms I don't know what's wrong with the notability. Okay, twelve point zero equal to. Uh, I will get the answers to be twelve point zero what? Okay, twelve point zero what? Yeah. Okay. Then again. So now let's consider. Uh the power loss via the R2 okay we can just follow this step as well right we can get that uh, the P of the R2 equal to the one half okay let me let me use this this one uh, delta V2 n square and then over the R2 right equal to the one half delta V2 uh, delta V2 is just 9.60 volts, right? The 9.60 n square, and then over the two times the R2, R2 is just the eight ohms. Okay, R2 is the x ohm. So then, uh, I got the answer to be the 5.76 watts okay so this is what I get so now let's check right let's check we say that we should get that uh, we should get that the the P source must be equal to the P of the R1 plus the P of the R2 this is what uh, we want okay so let's say the P source equal to what uh, equal to the 17.8 and then equal to the P of the R1, the 12.0, and then plus the 5.76, uh, right? Which is equal to 17.76. Uh, okay, so it's correct. Okay, so it's correct, right? Because we need only the three significant, uh, the three significant figures, so it is correct. Okay, so the next topic that we just want to study is going to be the resonance in the RLC circuit.